Back to pass. Top of his drop at the 15. Here comes the pressure. Rolls left, throws left. It's intercepted at the 30. Ernest Jones dodges a tackler inside the 20. Down the right sideline to the 10. Making his first NFL start. Ernest Jones with the interception. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our latest installment of Rams Revealed. Los Angeles is 7-1. and one. They're set to host Sunday Night Football against the Tennessee Titans. And, oh, by the way, they just traded to acquire Vaughn Miller to add to their vaunted pass rush. Here to discuss all that and so much more is rookie inside linebacker Ernest Jones. Ernest, doing? thank you for stopping by. It's great to see you. No problem. Thank you all for having me. I can't wait to get to your performance against mm-hmm. the Houston Texans, but I think we do need to start with the news of the day, the okay. news of the week with all pro edge rusher Vaughn Miller joining your defensive room, joining forces with Leonard Floyd and Aaron Donald and Jalen Ramsey. Your reaction? Uh, that's, that's crazy. Um, just know growing up, always been a fan of Von Miller, a fan of his work, and just now that he's going to be a part of the building. I'm excited to kind of learn from him, get some knowledge from him because he's been around for a while. So and I'm excited to watch him work and help us, you know, do our thing and win. How does news of a move like that spread within an organization? Like, is anyone giving you the heads up or are you looking at Twitter too? Oh, no, nobody gives us the head <laughs> up. It's, as soon as they find out, it hits the internet. So, you know, it um, got a notification on my phone and, you know, that was that. Let's take a step back. Let's go back eight days in time, okay? If we'd been having this conversation, you would have about 45 defensive <laughs> snaps of NFL experience under yeah. your belt. Your role was largely on special teams. Now you're starting yeah. in the middle of all this. How does that strike you? It's, it's wild. You know, uh, just just grateful to be here. A lot of work put into the, these moments, kind of prepare myself to always, you know, be ready for when my time was coming. And then, you know, just so happened to come, you know, eight days ago and I had to, you know, go out there and step up for my team. Who was the first person you let know that you might be starting? I text, I think I text my mom and my agent and my girlfriend. I told them, I was like, you know, it might be my time. And then they all responded how they responded. But, you know, they were all happy for me. Mm -hmm. It's probably so much different to come to the NFL when you've been the guy, right? Mm -hmm. In high school and college and a captain, a starter. And then for whatever period of time, you have to wait your turn. Yeah. It didn't turn out to be too long a wait, but what was that wait like? <laughs> oh, man, I, 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 I've always wanted to, you know, help. I always felt like I could help. And just, you know, sitting there and just being on special teams, you know, I love doing my job, but I, I also wanted to get out there and, you know, tackle people and just, you know, impact the game on defense. So, you know, waiting was hard for me, but I knew it was just – it was something I had to do. Let's continue chronologically then. What was your week of preparation like? Oh, yeah. It was um, busy. As soon as I you know, got the news about Kenny, kind of figured that I would be getting more reps, getting more playing time. So since then, I just you know started just watching the text and just getting into the plays that we will be running this week and just kind of you know breaking them down like I used to when I was a starter back in college. Get to the stadium, get off the bus, mm-hmm. pregame emotions. Where are you at? I'm hyped. I'm a little nervous. I've never really been nervous before a game, but I was just more so nervous. Like, man, AD and the boys, they they counting on me. I got to go out there and, you know, do my thing. So those those were thoughts were running through my mind, but I said a prayer, and then I was fine. Went out there and did what I love to do. So I don't want to speak for you, but if you got, like, the emotions of playing a rivalry game against Clemson uh-huh. here and then – NFL debut, SoFi Stadium here. You're saying this exceeds oh, all man, of that. That was that exceeded everything. I've like as far as my nerves, never been nervous before like that in my life. And that was something I'm like, man, Ernest, what's what's wrong? <laughs> but I shook him off and went out there and you know did what I do. Family in attendance? Oh yeah, my mom was there. That's she awesome. was able to come catch it. You lock eyes before kickoff. You're able to find her. I was able to find her. She came down and made sure she uh, told me where her seat was mm-hmm. at and. That was good. Good knowing where she was at. All right. So before we get to that second quarter interception, or maybe this was the play, at uh-huh. what point did those nerves settle and did you feel locked in back in your comfort zone? I think once we came out and then once I was like, I was like, man, well, I'm here now. There's no turning back. The game going to come. So once I got out there and was around the boys and, you know, locked eyes with a few of them and seeing that they were ready to go to war, I was ready to go myself. So. That's when I knew I was ready to go. And to get a pick in your first NFL start? Crazy. You wow. got pretty good hands, right? How would, well, you, you tell me, how would you describe your skill set with respect to ball skills? Oh, I got some good hands. You had a couple of picks as a collegiate, right? I did. 
I can catch. All right, so you weren't surprised when it found you. No, old school tight end, so I, I know how to get a little busy out there. <laughs> <laughs> Going so, back to your roots as a tight end. I right. Like it. it was on display. It wasn't an easy ball to catch. No. Um, and as a pass rusher, how about that dimension? You were credited with half a sack. Mm-hmm. You had a couple of other pressures. Do you expect to play on both sides of the line of scrimmage? Yeah, definitely. I just want to impact the game. I want to. I want to help. I want to get us to that. Get us to that promised land of that Super Bowl. So whatever I got to do, wherever I just got to step in, at, that's what I'm gonna. I'm gonna go do. So you may not have been surprised that a, a pass from Davis Mills found you, but were you surprised that a ball from Sean McVay found you in the post game locker oh, room? Very surprised. I was taking off my clothes. I was going to say, you know, I know you were shocked because you got caught with your pants down. I had my pants down. Literally, I was already taking my uniform off, getting ready to shower and do what I had to do. But that definitely caught me by surprise. That's awesome. What are you going to do with it? I'm framing it, keeping it. I'll have it for the rest of my life. No kidding. Lastly, what did the cell phone look like when you got back to your locker? It was blowing up. It was going crazy. Nothing like I've seen like since draft day almost. So it was going it was going crazy. So just blessed, man. Thankful to be in this position. Hmm. Looking forward to talking some draft with you in just a moment. But let's fast forward now to, to this moment, to the present time. And the thought was you get off the plane and you begin preparation for the NFL's leading rusher, maybe hmm. the most dominant ground force in professional football. Derrick Henry, though, it turns out, is not going to be at SoFi Stadium this right. weekend. Maybe Adrian Peterson will be hmm. instead. Right. How are you wrangling all that? Um, excited. I was excited about going against him. You know, I, I, I want to be one of the best. So, you know, you got to go against the best. You got to you do those things, you know, be, you know, known as one of the best. And he's that guy. But I'm fortunate about his situation. But we also have a, a Hall of Fame back himself still coming in. Adrian Peterson grew up watching him as well. So it's going to be exciting. I'm, I'm interested in the matchup and excited to get back out there and prove myself again you get a tackler maybe more than adrian peterson that's right. something you might tell your grandchildren about you can definitely uh so let's go to draft time next and you know we're still getting to know you that's part of what this podcast is all about as a rookie now in the starting rotation but what i found fascinating about your draft story mm-hmm. is that the rams look beyond the combine and the pro day and yeah. your film they use sam walker's leadership model in their evaluation mm-hmm. he's a renowned author on this topic how aware or familiar are you with that storyline um, I think Sam may have talked to us a few times, mm-hmm. but not too. I, I, that's the first time I've heard that. Mm. I did not. Well, then let's talk a little bit about what makes you a mm. leader. Let's just take it for granted that you are great and that they studied it and that's what they right. you know, leaned on to make you that's a member true. of this defense. How would you describe your leadership style? Um, right now, it's kind of um, I'm doing it by actions. You know, I mm-hmm. haven't made enough plays yet where, where I'm just able to be vocal. Um, but for the most part, when I'm able to, you know, when I do become a leader for this team, it'll it'll be through my actions, through my everyday how I come into the building and just how I go about the day and how I just make everybody else's day better. Um, just how I come to work and just I'm, I'm always happy, excited, ready to work, ready to see the guys and ready to just be around them. So I guess I'm an uh, all around leader. I, I, I'll get it done, you know, any, either way. So. So you're telling me as a 21-year-old, it's maybe not the easiest to speak up when you're surrounded by veteran all-pros oh, yeah. and future Hall of Famers. You're not ready to tell Aaron Donald where to go or what to do yet? <laughs> not yet. AD, AD knows where he's, what he's doing. I'm trying to listen to him. So I'm just, I'm just sitting back, you know, observing how they lead and just trying to, when it is my time, be the best leader mm-hmm. for the Rams. What about Jordan Fuller? Have you told him that you're coming for his green dot yet? Ooh, I haven't, but he, he needs to know. Because that's different for you, right? It's different. To be in that huddle and not be... Biggest pet peeve of mine. Really? I love being the green dot man. Because? It's just, I just love it. I love it. I love it. I love being the one that talks and calls the plays. Hmm. But I'm going to get it. I was going to say, what's it like playing without that responsibility? Does it lighten your load at all? Or does it make it a little bit unsettling? Well, even though he does call the plays, I'll still echo it and try to, you know, do some things and kind of beat him to it sometimes. So... Um, but I just, you know, get the call from him and whatever, just repeat it after him. Got it. Apart from your leadership, what is it about your skill set on the field that you think sets you apart? And I mentioned it earlier, but you know, you weren't drafted because of your 40 time, Mm -hmm. but you were drafted because of something that, you know, they say is a GPS tracker that Uh you've got that in your internal makeup. I mean, I've I, I've always said I've been blessed. I don't know the ball. I'm all I'm just able to find it. I'm always able to you know just be around it and 
navigate my way through places to get to the ball. So I, I've always said I'm just blessed to be <laughs> blessed right now. Well, they relied on your work, your mm-hmm. body of work, of course, the Sam Walker leadership model we touched on. The other thing was a vote of confidence from Thomas Brown, mm-hmm. who you share a connection with going back to your days right. at South Carolina. What are your thoughts on him as a, as a person, as a coach, and why do you think he's ascending the coaching ranks the way that he is? I mean, he's overall – I well, to answer all that, overall, he's just a great, great person, great guy. And, you know, when you meet him, when I first met him at South Carolina, you could tell that he was genuinely cared about his players and genuinely cared about, you know, the end goal, which is winning and the team. So just uh, having that relationship with him and then just knowing that he had a, you know, a kind of a say-so and me being able to come here was great. And I'm, I'm really appreciative of him. Of him. There is a, a Gamecocks flavor to this roster. There's mm-hmm. also a lot of Georgia connections on both sides, the football and in the coaching ranks. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about Waycross, Georgia. Oh, yeah. What about your upbringing shaped you as a person and a player? Um, Just, I mean, just seeing my mom work hard. We didn't have, we didn't have much, but we didn't have anything. So just seeing her just make sure that we were just straight, even when times were rough and just seeing how she just kept going, that motivated and motivated me to, you know, just want to be better, want to put them in better situations and want to put myself in better situations. So that, that kind of had a big, big part of it. How'd you go about doing that? Just working, work my tail off every day. I, you know, try to do right by people, always were kind, respectful, for, respectful to everyone. Mm-hmm. Um, it just worked. Worked every day in football. Worked out in the weight room, and just put my mind on this goal of being in the NFL, and it came true. So, how about your mother, who I can tell means everything to you? Yeah. What did she do to make sure that you and your loved ones had everything you needed? She worked. She she worked. She prayed for us all the time and make sure we covered that way. But she was also a hard worker. So anytime we needed anything, she would always make sure that she, you know, she if she needed to do something extra, she did it. So. Mm. That's I'm grateful for her for real. Have you ever been to Los Angeles prior to the draft process? Oh no, first time out here. No kidding. Yeah. What are you making of it so far? I love it. Oh man, I love it out here. It's 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 the best place that I've been to. I love it. Any reason in particular? What is it about the I vibe that you? Everything. Think? It's just and like you just said, it, it's a great just vibe out here. You know, I'm I'm kind of. A homely guy so i feel like you know just everything at home is just perfect just the the air the sun is always out just it's great around here i love it that's a great way to lead into your first home start at sofi stadium against the tennessee titans let's get to three and out it's our closing segment gave you a quick sneak preview of what's to come Uh, but i've got three final questions for you and if you uh, answer them i don't want to say correctly but to all of our satisfaction how about that i'll make a contribution to the la rams foundation on your behalf ernest and by the way it is ernest we're gonna go with ernest right no nicknames that we're ready to take on yet not yet okay that wasn't a question but i do want to take it under advice (laughs) here's the first question uh last week a social media video made the rounds Uh, it featured aaron donald and it made me wonder is he more dominant on the field or in the locker room with a nerf cannon that Nerf Kenny is amazing, but on the field, I don't know how you can match that either. When he came out with that Nerf Kenny, he got after you guys. We were all scared. Did you know that was coming? Didn't know. I was the. I think I was the first one to catch him in the locker room setting it up. I'm like, oh man, he's he means business right now. <laughs> Lastly, we turn the calendar to November. I'm not a big Halloween guy. I'm mm-hmm. glad to put October Definitely. behind us. And you've got a Thanksgiving week birthday upcoming, right? Yes. All right, so let's get in the Thanksgiving mood then. Uh What is the best Thanksgiving dish that you look forward to? Dressing and macaroni and cheese. Okay, dressing. This is is a good call. Not stuffing. Okay, dressing. dressing. Because? Just don't call it stuffing because that just doesn't sound right. (laughs) And you want it cooked in the bird? Yes, dressing. Oh, no, 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 no. You're not okay the, with it on the side? On the side. the side. Oh, no, not in the bird. Okay. Um, and what was the other one you said? Mac and cheese? Mac and is cheese. the other one. Okay. Go to. Oh, man. Can't get here soon enough. I'm excited. And that's birthday 22 for you? 22. Awesome. Ernest, thank you for spending part of your uh, Monday with us. Congratulations on an incredible, I don't want to say debut, mm-hmm. but starting debut in the National Football League. We know it's just the start of things to come. Thank you all so much for having me. All right. For Ernest, I'm JB, and this is Rams Reveal. Rams Reveal.